Australians, well, may be retiring too early, many dramatically underestimating how much money they'll need to fund retirement. Let's delve into that with the advisory, Rodney Horan from Joseph Palmer & Sons joins us now. Rodney, welcome to Ausbiz. Thanks for joining us. So I see that as an investment advisor, you do help with that transition into aged care. What are perhaps the considerations that Australians don't make, but the mistakes perhaps leaving themselves short? Thank you for having us. What I'm seeing in my client base and the broader community is a perfect storm. People are retiring too early, living longer, returns haven't been great until recently, perhaps uh, being a bit too generous on the way through to their children. And uh, if they're hoping and uh, with longevity these days, say li retiring at 60 and living to 90, you're getting to a situation in their late 70s, early 80s, where they are running out of money. Let, lest uh, of all planning for the heavy cost of, of aged care that may be lying ahead in their 80s or 90s. So uh, we're certainly seeing more and more examples of that. Um, and they're also, we're seeing examples of people these days retiring with debt. Well, I mean, this is the problem, isn't it? That you just don't know how much you need in retirement because you have no idea how long you're going to live for. But clearly, you don't necessarily have an income, um, certainly not a working income, but hopefully you've got a pension or super to get you by, but you've still got to maintain those costs. Arguably, they're going to go up in terms of your health care. So how do you actually calculate for that? So the average person is retiring for men with a superannuation balance of 436,000. Women, it's about 382,000. So in simple mathematics, if you're earning 5% on that amount, it's only generating about 21, 22,000 a year. In most occasions, it is completely short of what your living needs are. So if a person, for example, wanted $100,000 a year to live on and returns were 5%, you need a capital pool of $2 million to generate that. When returns dropped to 1%, not that long ago, a couple of years ago, to generate that 100000 you need a capital pool of $10 million. Most Australians aren't retiring for anything near those sums, we just said. Plus, throw in that the average age of a first home buyer today is 37 years of age, and an average loan is a 30-year loan people in their late 60s are still retiring with debt. And debt usually where it is larger than what their superannuation balances are. So the only solution I've been able to see to this situation that I'm seeing evidence more and more of is one needs to sort of defer the retirement age and work longer. The average retirement age which is close to 60 today. It wasn't long ago, it was 56. So uh, that's what we're seeing. You, there mm. seems to be no other alternative but to keep working as long as possible or to not sort of drop dead, equivalent, uh, excuse uh, any uh, misinterpretation, but to not just stop on to retire completely, but to ease into retirement over a period. Well, no doubt that would dash the hopes of many um, if you uh, need to work longer. Perhaps can you be smarter but obviously, we've got to talk, talk about this at an earlier age in terms of your investments and your super and so on, in terms of setting up a nest egg. Oh, absolutely. Look, one, the power of compounding interest is extraordinary, as we know. Basic mathematics, we, arithmetic, we all learned at school. So it's not easy for someone in their 20s and 30s to start putting away excess dollars. The l cost of living is so high, we're finding people later in life now than ever before have spare disposable dollars for investment. That's our problem. The high cost of housing, private education, they want to put their kids through schooling, just living costs generally, where once upon a time people could say, okay, in my late 40s, I've now got some excess dollars on an annual basis to invest in my superannuation retirement. It's just not happening to the late mm. 50s or 60s. That's what I'm describing and what I'm observing on a fairly regular basis in our core businesses, investment advisors, is that situation. 
So it does start from an early age, but it's not always possible. So the living standards of today's generation are going to be very different to our generation. So you may be fortunate enough to remain in your family home, perhaps, as you uh, as you get older. But of course, many will require movement into aged care. How do you calculate those costs, Rodney? Well, the aged care sector is extraordinarily complex and confusing. It's full of acronyms. They change a simple word that we all know and understand. That is a bond. And it's now referred to as either a RAD, DAP, DAC, or a RAC. So ridiculously confusing. My experience personally convinced me beyond any shadow of a doubt when I was assisting my late mother transition into care that one could conceivably overpay to enter, pay more than they need to for the bond, and then continue to overpay on a monthly basis. So there are so many moving parts and there's so many nuances. There is no substitute for getting professional advice in order for you not to overpay. Entering the aged care industry, there are certain aspects of the fees and charges that can be negotiated depending on supply and demand. A facility may be asking 800,000, but they may well take five or 600,000 because their, their fees are based on rooms being occupied. And there's other fees and charges that also have some negotiation capability about them. So it's not a DIY exercise. You could easily, if you attempted to bungle your way through understanding the complexities of aged care, you could very, very conceivably overpay unnecessarily. However, I gather changes are afoot in terms of legislative changes next year. What do they amount to? So I actually agree with those changes. What they're predicated upon is those who've got means should be paying more. The aged care industry is very interesting. Over 50% of aged care facilities currently are running at a loss. And we as a society need aged care more than it needs us. And with an aged care business, the costs are fixed. They're set under the Aged Care Act under legislation. But of course, with the rising costs of everyday living, the margins are being squeezed. So we need to provide for a robust and financially healthy industry to cater for the growing needs of the future. It's estimated that nearly four times the amount of people today will be needing aged care in the next 40 years, and an extraordinarily high percentage of Australia's population will be over 85 in that year. So basically, one of the expenses is called the Commonwealth Means Tested Fee. That's currently capped at $84,000, and that's being extended to 100 30,000, which means wealthier people who can afford it, they're assessed as to their affordability, their means, assets and income, they'll pay more. And I personally actually agree with that. Those with means, I believe, should be paying more. Those with and Rodney, if you're not fortunate enough to own a family home as an asset to sell and then buy into aged care, what are your options? Well, it's a, I'm very pleased you answered that because if you're in that situation and you don't own a home and you're most likely in that same scenario on a full pension, no Australian citizen is denied an aged care bed. And in that situation, you'd be considered to be a concession or a low means person and you don't have to pay a bond. No Australian citizen is denied an aged care bed under any circumstances. One of the characteristics of this lucky country we live in. So all you'll have to pay in that circumstance is 85% of your daily pension, which is about $63 a day currently. So certainly if you can afford it, you'll be asked to pay. If you're at the means of the example you just referred to then, you can get into a top facility in Australia and not pay anything but 85% of your daily pension. It's always that large middle band that might own a home, might have a superannuation fund, might own a sh few shares or have an investment property, they're the ones that are going to struggle and they're the ones that need to avail themselves of specialist aged care advice in order to ensure they get the best financial outcome.